So now, now what you do, because you want to test this hypothesis. Here we are. <laughs> Warcraft <laughs> Mall. Let's do it. Left-leaning psychologists generated this data. You think, well, how do you know that? That's easy. Well, there are no right, right-leaning psychologists. Hardcore <laughs> random. Well, that's what people say, you know. And so, <laughs> and, and that's been well documented. And so people have published this data despite their ideological proclivities. And despite the fact that they expected to find or what they wanted to find. So what you do now is you, you stack countries by how egalitarian your social policies are, right? From the least egalitarian to the most. And you say, well, the Scandinavian countries are the most egalitarian. And by the way, if we don't agree on that, then there's no sense having this discussion at all because we don't agree on what egalitarian means. If you don't think that what the Scandinavians have done has been a move in the direction of egalitarianism, then I have no idea what you mean by egalitarianism. Now, you could say, well, they haven't done it perfectly. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's not relevant to this argument. So what you do is you stack countries by how egalitarian your social policies are, and then you look at occupational and personality differences between men and women as a function of the country. And what you find is, as the country becomes more egalitarian, the differences between men and women increase. They don't decrease. And so what that means is that the radical social constructionists are wrong. And it's not a few studies with a couple of people done by some half-witted psychologists in some tiny little university. It's population-level studies that have been published in major journals that have been cited oh by my thousands God, of dude. people. It's, it's not it's not oh, questioned, it's not questioned yeah. by mainstream psychometricians and personality theorists. We figured this out back in like 1995. Everyone thought it was settled. And so what's the big problem? Well, who knows what the big problem is? The outcome is not exactly the same between the genders. It's like, well, who says it has to be? And more important, and this is something to ask yourself constantly, just who the hell's going to enforce that? And just exactly how are they going to enforce that? And believe me, it's not going to be in some manner that you like that. Because there are differences between them. And if you leave them alone, those differences manifest themselves in different occupational choices. And that's the other finding. This is a newer one. As the societies become more egalitarian, the occupational choices between men and women maximize. And what that means is that the fewer and fewer downloading women in the state minutes. Now, no one wanted that. No one predicted it. No one was hoping for it. It actually flew in the face of, I would say, the most established psychological theory. Because my presupposition certainly was 20 years ago that what would have happened as we made societies more egalitarian would be that men and women would converge. That's not what happened. The biological difference is maximized as we eliminated the sociocultural differences. And so maybe you don't like that. It's like, that's fine with me. I didn't say I liked it. But whether or not I like the piece of data has very little bearing on whether or not I'm likely to accept it. And I'm trying to look at the damn scientific literature to draw the conclusions that are necessitated by the data. And then you can say, well, the whole thing is suspect because it's the it's the construction of the patriarchal tyrants who generated the Eurocentric scientific viewpoints. Like, if you want to have that conversation, then go to an activist discipline and have it. Because it's not the sort of conversation that anyone sensibly would engage in. So, like, like crazy, bro. Open up the room to YouTube, Steve, recording. Short, but genuine questions. Uh, someone with a microphone will find you if you raise your hand. Uh, yes. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. My name is Pranav. Uh, I wanted to uh, understand a little bit of your view more on the fact that, uh, not fact, but the observation <laughs> that over generations and generations, so like at least what I've heard and seen uh, from my family, I mean, uh, take up that women being told about their position in the home and uh, Men being told their position to work and uh, be a little more aggressive, you know, the social conditioning. So, how does that play a role? Because I, I dark trolls, trolls and the shit. The uh, dimension of reaching these conclusions. Uh, well, I've never claimed that the differences between men and women are 100% biologically determined. 
they're biologically influenced. The radical constructionists think the opposite thing. There are no biological differences between men and women. So, first of all, that's a preposterous thing. There usually requires an answer, but you might you might specify that and say, no, there are no biological differences that manifest themselves psychologically. And that's not quite as preposterous, but it's also incorrect. It's obviously the case that all sorts of things about the sex sex roles and, and gender roles, let's say are conditioned by sociocultural mechanisms because human beings are very, very plastic. And so the manner in which those biological differences manifest themselves in the culture is radically influenced by the nature of the culture. But that doesn't mean that the biological influences don't exist. So what are you saying should we be countering that sort of traditional um, the traditional cultural norms? <laughs> At one point, you're saying that it's what a biological or inherent in Well, some of it is. Yeah, but it's very unclear in the way, at least maybe one hour is very short and maybe there's a larger discussion. It seems that it's easy to deduce that these are inherent differences which uh, exist and social conditioning uh, wasn't taken as a parameter. Well, that's controlled for by the comparison between the societies that have different levels of egalitarianism built into their social structure. It's all taken care of in the analysis. If the biological differences manifest themselves maximally, where the socio-cultural influences to equalize gender are maximal, then obviously the biological differences are powerful and profound. It's conclusive. So it's taken into account in, 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 in the data analysis. Wow, that's game so over. That's why you stack up the countries by by the, 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 the egalitarian nature of the social policy control for the social and cultural influence. So, you know, just you like that. that. Just think it through for a minute. Wow. It, it isn't even that what you would have expected theoretically is that the societies that are the least egalitarian would have the biggest differences between them and them. And then as the societies got more and more egalitarian, those differences would get smaller and maybe and maybe disappear even, but that isn't what happened. Wow. It's exactly the opposite is what happened. They maximized in the most egalitarian societies. Therefore, the social constructionist position 